It's like writing for the referee at the start of a, a rugby game, where they're looking to the sideline saying, when's the camera starting? Monsieur le referee? Bon? Way! Okay, bon, bonvenue to Le Mans à Paris. Um, welcome to Paris. Um, at half five in the evening, and we have a full house. I'm really impressed. Well done with your staying power, folks. This is, this is really cool. Um, as you probably know, because you read the title of the talk, uh, Juan and I are here to represent the Cloud Natives Builds Pack, Cloud Native Pill Packs project. Um, I suppose the first thing to do, say up front is that I'm going to do a little introduction for the first 10 minutes or so. This is a maintainer track talk, so some folks are going to expect some more technical details, which Juan is going to go into, and then we'll, uh, we'll conclude at the end with um, some, some stuff that everybody might be interested in as well. So, Cloud Native Build Packs. What we do at Cloud Native Build Packs is that we, we, we develop a specification hosted at buildpacks.io. Now, there are multiple implementations of this specification. All of them, though, share the same intention. What we want to do is transform source project into production application images. Uh, Buildpacks do this by understanding your existing application's build system. So, for example, understanding NPM if you are building a Node.js application. And we essentially orchestrate the build using your existing build system, but output an OCI image, a Docker image that you can then use to deploy on Kubernetes. So we want to start with some kind of application source. I've got a demo here, which I'm not going to show you the source, but trust me, I'm a professional. It has a, a Go backend or a backend written in Go. And it's got a front end written in TypeScript, which needs to be compiled down to JavaScript and then served up using Nginx or something. And what we're going to do to build this is we're going to install the pack CLI from buildpacks.io. That's our command line tool called pack. And then I'm going to choose a builder image. You can see the command at the top of the screen. I'm going to choose a builder image, and a builder image is a set of build packs, a collection of build packs. We just package them all into a single OCI image for distribution. And here I'm going to use a set of build packs from the marvelous Paketo project, an open source project. However, I could have chosen build packs from Heroku, who make an excellent set of build packs, or I could have chosen a set of build packs from Google because they specialize their build packs for Google Cloud Run and some of their other platforms. And I got to run pack, as you can see, in my source directory, passing in the builder image. And after pack runs through all the stages specified in the cloud native build pack specification, we'll end up with an image that we can use. And we can ex execute that output image in the usual manner. Now, on this slide, I'm using Podman to launch the backend service on port 8080. But you could use Docker, or you could use uh, Kubernetes, or if you're really cool, you could just directly invoke run C. So this launches my Go backend, and I'm choosing a separate entry point on the image to launch my front end service on port 3000. And this launches my React front end. So visiting localhost in a web browser shows the hello world message in tiny writing on the bottom that's passed through from the back end to my front end. Now, Pack is a great tool for local development, but most of us want to scale our image builds by incorporating Pack into existing CI, into existing continuous integration systems. And Pack can be integrated into your existing Jenkins build. Now, you can go and write your own Jenkins pipeline if you'd like to. It's straightforward, and I've done it many times. Or you could adopt the open source Project Piper Jenkins library, which you can see on the right hand side. And that Jenkins library, library can be used to run a CNB build, a cloud native build packs build. If instead you're a GitHub Action user, you can use a GitHub Action to make pack available. And then your project can invoke pack to build and push images to a registry. The project documentation at buildpacks.io forward slash docs 
does demonstrate how to integrate PAC with Tekton as well. But if I've not mentioned your favorite CI system, then please do look at, at our documentation for a longer list of integrations. And we're open to PRs if you've got an integration that we don't have uh, documented. In addition to the PAC command line tool, we maintain a Kubernetes operator, which is cunningly called KPAC, which acts as an image build cluster. Uh, on the left-hand side of the slide, you can see an example image custom resource definition with some fake bits put in because I didn't want to give you the real location of this image because I had to pay Google to host it and that would kill my billing at the end of the month. Uh, and the image CRD is applied to the KPAC cluster. On the right-hand side, you can see a real example where I actually do build the source application straight from the source repository on GitHub. So it's monitoring the source repository on GitHub looking for changes, and any time there's a change to the main line, it builds a new image, and progresses through each of the steps defined again in the Cloud Native's build pack specification. Now, sticking with the KPAC built image, I'll create a deployment for my local K3S cluster, which is work working on my actual laptop. And you can see in the deployment that there is a single image that contains the default entry point to run our backend service. We apply that to our cluster, and voila! That's French people. <laughs> we can hit the back end with a GET request. Um, and if we wanted to create a HTTP ingress to the cluster, well, then it will take us a total of six minutes and 10 seconds to have gone from source code to a working deployment. And if we were to automate all that, then the time itself gets reduced to simply the amount of time that it takes to build the image plus some change. Now, at the start of the presentation, I stated that build packs build production application images. These are the kind of images that are intended to run as web applications on a service such as Heroku or VMware's Tanzu platform, or possibly as functions as a service platform such as Google Cloud Run. They may even be things that you want to run as jobs in an Argo workflow. Uh, or if you attended the keynote yesterday, my colleagues were talking about using build packs to build images that run as machine learning training jobs or AI services running on top of Knative. But the thing is, by production image, I mean images with the kind of properties that we've listed up here, that they have a small attack surface, that they've got a full software bill of materials, that when we, we design things to run in reduced privileges, so there's non-root users on them, and ideally it's reproducible builds. Kind of by, by small attack surface, like ideally images contain only the dependencies that your application requires. And a minimal run image would be a scratch image that's using a non-root user. However, you know, th this, th that's pretty much the smallest attack surface that we can present to any external interface. But in reality, to support something like a Python runtime, you probably need a libc on that image. And to get closer even to reality, your minimal image, if it needed to support a JVM, certainly needs to have libc on it and lib free type. I'm not sure why. And if somebody can tell me, I'd be really interested. In these cases, generally, the run image does not need a shell unless your application code uses one. So you can put in a run image into your build packs build that doesn't contain a shell. Now, I've used the default Paketo run image in this case, which is described by the upstream folk, the Paketo folks, who we know and love, as an Ubuntu Jammy image with some common dependencies like TZ data, so the time zone data, and OpenSSL. Using small images improved the performance of image distribution simply by being easier to cache and smaller to download. This kind of makes sense. And because build packs, though, orchestrate your application build, the system is aware of all the build time dependencies that your application uses. For example, if you had a Python application uh, and it used GCC to compile some uh, native dependency, well, build packs then have enough knowledge to add GCC to your software bill of materials from build time. It's kind of easy to overlook the value of software bills of material. I know we've been talking about them for a few years at this stage, but particularly from an EU perspective right now, obviously not in the Middle East, but you know, sorry, I've got to cater to this audience. Uh, from an EU perspective, the software bill of materials is a cornerstone of many of our 
technical processes to address the recent Digital Operations Resilience Act obligations that we have. Now, the final thing I want to talk about here is, is uh, reproducible builds. If you use pinned dependencies, now Go does this by default. You've got your go.sum file. Uh, Node has its package.lock file. Um, and Python, you can pip freeze to pin your dependencies. But if you use pinned dependencies, and if you build the same commit of the same source code using the same builder, then two separate image builds using pack will produce images that are byte for byte uh, equivalent to each other. You can see this as a real interesting side effect if you exec into one of the running images in a pod, and then ls minus l the slash cnb directory. And what you'll see in there is that the creation time for all the files is the 1st of January 1980. Uh, and this makes sure that simple things like uh, the, the, the creation time or the M time of files on the image does not make the images differ and we get the byte for byte reproducibility. So kind of in summary, we've looked at uh, how to build images using the PAC CLI. We've had a little look at how to build images using the KPAC Kubernetes operator. And we've had a look at the properties that we expect from output production application images. So say fantastic. And at this stage, I'd like to check with you all to see how much of what we've covered is new. So could I get you to wave at me if that was new content to a bunch of you? Cool. OK. Wow. So about 60% of the room, this is brand new to. So we've just introduced build packs to you. And about 40% of the room are like, we want more, Aiden. Give us more. OK. So what we're interested in uh, so we, we've had a look at building images using PAC and KPAC. And the question at this stage is, does it scale? And the answer to that is that PAC and KPAC scale to VMware Tanzu scale. Or similarly, PAC and KPAC scale to Heroku scale. Now, both VMware uh, uh, Tanzu and Heroku provide collections of build packs with wide support for many language stacks. By contrast, Yesterday's keynote, my colleagues from Bloomberg uh, described how build packs are used to build training workloads for, on Bloomberg's data science platform. Yushua and Leon also described how build packs are used to build production AI services at Bloomberg. Another example of the kind of scale achieve, that can be achieved by build packs is in a functions of the service, which you can see as an example on the right hand side on Google Cloud Run. This is me actually executing that gcloud build command down here and capturing the output. And you can see in the output that it's running through the same steps that we expect from the build pack specification. And Google's command line tool can build your, your, your function using the Google collection of build packs. So we've looked at this stage at some of the existing features of build, but that allow build packs to scale to a large-scale image build platforms. And we've even seen examples of some of these large-scale image build platforms. I am now going to hand over to Juan to show you the progress that we've made on new features over the past year. <laughs> Thank you, Aidan. Cool. The future. Right. Let's see what we have here. So. Uh, one of the things that are being asking from the community is when are we going to have a better support for multi-arc? And basically the idea behind that is right now most of the people is using probably an M1 or M2 local machine and they want to actually build their image in their local machines, right? So let's start by answering this question, what is a multi-architecture OCI image? Uh, so basically, a multi-architecture OCI image is based on a OCI image manifest, and that manifest is basically uh, describing uniquely your image, right? And it has all the layers inside of it. And when you run, for example, pack build right now, and you inspect your image in the daemon, for example, you will see that manifest. Now, if you want to support multi-arc, then you need an image index in front of your manifest. So basically, an image index is just a collection of manifest, and then you will have some metadata there, right, that specify which platform your manifest is supporting. 
So that's all part of the OCI spec, nothing new. We knew the spec and that's cool. Now, just for make things more clear, let's take a look at how a mani an image index is inside of it, right? So it's just a JSON file, right? So if we use crane tool to inspect the VCBox image that everybody is using probably right now, uh, you will see uh, you will see that we get this image index, right? The image index as the purpose of the demo, we just have to manifest inside of it. One for MD64 and one for R. Now, uh, but what is this useful, right? Uh, why do I need to care about this? So let's put our head as a developer, right? You just want to run probably Docker pull, Docker run, and you don't want to worry about your host OS and your host architecture, right? You just want to do Docker pull and that's it, right? So that's the beneficial or that's the idea behind the image index that you don't need to care about. So we want to do the same thing, right? The problem is we want to run pack build as Aiden already showed before, and we want to do it on an ARM machine, no. MD64 machine, and we expect that everything should work. So, what is cloud native build packs doing to support that uh, building multi, multi arc architecture images? So, let's just make clear the problem. The problem is something like this I already told you, we just need image indexes, right? Image indexes are part of the OCI spec. Cool. Now, Right now, we could build those image, uh, those image indexes, but the problem is that our friends, the build pack authors providers, do not have the tooling to make that work easy. So if we use this compatibility check table on the left side <laughs> from you, you will see that uh, there are all the different components that we are distributing in a registry pack life cycle and on the left on the right side we will see that for linux md64 we are okay we don't have any issue but for arm machines or for arm architecture then we have a technical debt on build packs and builders and that's problem that's the problem we have right now build packs and, build and builders are part of the job that the build packs are to author are doing so to answer the question what we are doing Basically, there is an RFC to update the pack CLI to allow the pack build pack package command and the pack builder create command to handle the image index creation for you, right? We want to make their life easier. Easier. So you can scan the QR code if you want to have more details. But in summary, what the RFC is proposing is two main things. The first one is just a new folder structure to organize your binaries. So you are a build pack author, right? You want to provide the different binaries you need for different OS and architectures. So now you will be able to organize your binaries according to the OS architecture or maybe variant, you know, all the flavors you need. The other change is you will have to update some configuration files maybe the build pack toml or the package toml depending on what you're building uh, to include targets right those are the two changes but let's try to see how it will work in a real demo so give me just one sec here okay Okay, so we are going to use our samples repo, okay? The build pack samples repo. Inside that repo, you will find in this path, in, in, inside the build packs folder, you will, you will find several build, examples build packs, right? Let's take a look on the hello world build pack right now, the one that we have. Uh, if we inspect what we have inside that uh, folder, you will see there is a bin folder with two binaries right build and the detect that's part of the spec and then you will have a build pack toml and a package toml if you just inspect that you will see the problem okay if i'm i'm a build pack author how do i 
do if I want to create multi-arc images, if I need to create a different binary for the build and the detect. So that's the real problem. Now, what we're going to do is let's apply the change proposed in the RFC. And let's see how the Hello World build pack it's going to look right now. Cool. So we just reorganized the binaries. Probably we recompiled them, right? And we put it on different folders according to the RFC. That's the first change. Now, the other change is, let's take a look on the build pack TOML. We need to do some changes there. What are the changes? We need to add targets, right? So if you see the mark there on the left, it's exactly what we just changed. We just added the targets we want to support. Now, let's use the uh, binary compile with the new features is still in progress, but let's take a look at what's happening. So we are going to run pack build pack package command, and we're going to say let's save it on some repo. It's I'm running just a local registry, and let's publish the result. Now, what just happened? Packet's going to read the build pack toml. It's going to find more than one target. Right? And for each target, it's going to try to create a single image. It's going to push it to the registry, and once that's done, it's going to create the image index for us. Right? So let's take a look and let's use Crane, similar on what we did before with the busy box. And you will see that effectively we have this image indexed. And now we are supporting MD64 and ARM64 for the Hello World example with those two changes. Nice. But sometimes things are more complicated, right? I did some stuff behind the scenes. It doesn't matter. It's just for this demo. But what happened if we have a multi-architecture composed build pack? What do I need to do if I'm a build pack author? Well, the answer is the same thing, right? You just need to update, but in this case, it's not the build pack toml file. You will need to update your package toml. And what you need to add there, let's see, is the same thing, right? You need to define the targets, and the other changes are just for the purpose of the demo. We are using a local registry where we already published the Hello World multi-arc build pack. And behind the scenes, I just built the Hello Moon build pack, right? Just to, for saving some time. Cool. Now we already update our package toml for our composed build pack, and we want to package it, right? We are going to execute the same command, the build pack package common. But in this case, we're going to also pass through the flag uh, with a configuration file that contains the changes we just did. Let's run it. And again, similar to the previous example, packet's going to read the package toml. It's going to notice, oh, more than one target. Let me create all the intermediate image for you. And then at the end of the day, I will create the image index for you. Awesome. Now, things could be more interesting. Now, we already have, uh, you can see, and you can inspect also uh, the manifest for this Compose build pack. Uh, this is also just, we are just built the uh, builder and the run images behind the scenes just for saving some time. So right now we already have uh, multi-arc build packs. Hello War, Hello Moon. Uh, and the Hello Universe, which is the Compose build pack. We just built a builder and a run image that are also multi-arc. Now it's time to create a multi-arc builder. How we do it? No magic behind the scenes. It's just a matter of updating your builder tomo. You need to add your targets, right? And then, again, execute uh, the pack builder create command. Pack builder create command, their configuration file you just updated, and the publish flag to save it into the local registry we're using, and then we will have this multi-arc builder, right? Packet's going to do all the heavy lifting, looking for the correct image according to the 
uh, or as some platform that you're building. And at the end, you can also inspect the builder, distribute that to your team, and you're done. Awesome. Uh, and you're going to ship that now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right after the talk. <laughs> Can we get a coffee first? <laughs> Brilliant. Right. I need a drum roll. Natalie, can you just start? I need a drum roll. Come on, people. I need a drum roll. It's late in the day. We need your energy. I need a drum roll. We are delighted to announce that KPAC now supports the highest level of salsa compliance. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Right, for those of you who are not aware, uh, salsa.dev is a security framework for artifact build systems. Uh, the slide here shows a summary table that I've taken from their documentation at salsa.dev. And that documentation describes level one through level three of salsa compliance. Now, from a European perspective, and we are in Paris, uh, salsa.dev is a list of technical objectives that we can then relate back to our obligations under the network, the various network and information security directives, and particularly under the sector specific obligations such as the Digital Operations Resilience Act. I'm a technologist. I need more uh, operational things than the, the, the legislation. And that's what salsa.dev gives me at the moment. So KPAC, with the Salsa attestation feature enabled, provides Salsa level one compliance. This is because it comes with a consistent build process and it generates a provenance document. If you're interested, it's an in toto attestation to which we add the, the, the build uh, provenance to it. But KPAC, with the, level, uh, with the Salsa attestation feature enabled and with a signing key provided, provides Salsa level three compliance. And level three describes what they call upstream the hardened builds. The build occurs on a Kubernetes cluster, and usually this means it's on dedicated infrastructure. The signing private keys are provided via Kubernetes secret, which uses ORBAC to ensure that there's minimal access to that secret. Uh, the build are run in pods themselves, which are isolated from each other via the standard Kubernetes primitives and builds are, that are run using a build packs builder, which is an immutable OCI image that Juan just showed us. And this prevents tampering with the, the build steps during the build process. Finally, the private keys that are used to sign the attestation only become accessible during the completion stage of the process. So they're not, accept, uh, not accessible at any other steps in the build process which means that we get to level three compliance. And we are very grateful, and we would love to thank the, the KPAC team as part of the BuildPACs organization for all their work in getting to this milestone. So thank you very much, KPAC team. This is um, unseen work, except. So what have we done? Uh, we've demonstrated the operation of PAC and hopefully convinced a bunch of you just to try PAC as a command line tool. We've also demonstrated KPAC and showed you that there's a Kubernetes operator there to build all your images directly from your, your source repositories. Uh, and we've provided examples how build packs build production images at scale. In addition, kind of build pack specification itself and PAC and KPAC were designed from the ground up with security in mind. This is with things like Dora in mind, but done five or six years ago, because, you know, some people are very clever. Um, that we have an ongoing investment in the BuildPacks project on things like Salsa compliance to ensure we have the highest level of security. And we've got an ongoing investment, as you've seen, in multi-architecture support. What Juan's just demoed hasn't been shipped yet, because no. we've got to crack that whip and get him to ship it. <laughs> but this is on top of building of our, our are five plus years of existing production deployment pedigree. So we feel like we're delivering trustworthy systems that can be trusted in production. So 
people of Paris, thank you very much for staying late to listen to us, and we're happy to take any questions you can throw our direction. Uh, thank you very much for the great project. I think it's, it's a wonderful project. Big fan of Heroku uh, way back in the day. Um, and, and that whole experience of just get pushed and just works. Um, the, you demonstrated this application and had like back end and front end. Um, yep. I'm not familiar. There was this thing that was deprecated. Uh, I can't remember that, the name of it. But it's stuck. Uh, Yes, uh, is, there, is there something that allows me to kind of, ha I mean, I would probably have my own builder for that, but um, generate separate images for the back end and the front end? Um, or, like, or is there builders that do that already? Yeah, um, so uh, I intentionally made that demo just a slight bit more complicated because it was building on a talk that we gave, Mercy. Uh, last year about extend or, or ways to configure the build process. So Natalie gave a talk last year on, on how to extend the build packs process. So what that demo actually does is it pulls together a bunch of different build packs and mixes them and matches them to get the output that I want. Now, can you build uh, a Go, uh, in, uh, can you build the Go code in that repository and output one image and then the Node.js code in that repository or the TypeScript code in that repository and output another image? Yes. Uh, you'd end up executing pack twice. Uh, once just to build the, the Go application in that repository and a second time to build the, uh, with, with uh, a Node.js only builder to build the, the, the TypeScript code in that repository. Does that make sense as an answer? It, it does. I'm, like, the, the thing that I'm concerned about here is like artifact distribution, right? Let's say I have a big mono repo yes. and I don't necessarily want to build all those servers and squash them in one big image, right? But I'd like to fan out. Yeah. Um, as, a, as my understanding right now is that the only way that we can achieve that is by running pack once per your application that you're building from that, that, that repository. So you'd effectively have multiple targets and you'd run pack for each target. Now, because you are running pack in that repository, I'm not going to comment on how the caching gets shared because the people who know about caching better than I are sitting in the front row and maybe we can talk about that afterwards. Cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, a, something, it's a feature that has come up before. Um, we have not yet written an RFC, so a request for comments, which would be the first stage on um, adding the feature to PAC. But if it was something that you're interested in, we'd happily help you write that RFC and uh, see how we could get that implemented. Sure, yep. Thank you very much. I have a follow-up question. So what if I do have uh, basically sequential build steps? So imagine I have some protobuf definitions in my repository that my Go backend uh, needs and you need to generate types out of that. Can I model that with a build pack? Good question. Um, I, I'm not as familiar with protobufs as I should be. Uh, if I Gave Just imagine you, like uh, a generic code generation yeah. step ahead of. Well, if I gave, if I used a Node.js example, um, so the, uh, the 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 package.json file. Thank you. We've got two minutes left. The package.json file would allow me to chain build steps in that package.json file. And as build packs, all we do is orchestrate the underlying build system that you're using, so that if your build system is capable of expressing that generate these files before you do the, the build, then yes, we could orchestrate that. But for but, example, with protobuf, if I need to run proto C or proto -C. buff CLI or something before running go build, then that probably wouldn't work well. No, the real answer here is actually, and I, I don't know why I'm just not giving, build packs are composable units. So if we're missing a build pack that does something like say runs proto C, um, then we would invite you or anyone in the community just to write that build pack and click it in as one of the Lego bricks inside one of these builders. Um, then 
your build pack would examine to see is cogeneration needed. If it is, it will run. If it isn't, it will opt out of the build and just let the build run uh, unfettered. Is that a better answer to your question? Yeah, thanks for that answer. Good, thank you. Um, we are out of time. There is a big triangle at the back of the room saying that we've run over time. Yeah. So thank you very much, but you know, we're hanging around to answer more questions. So, yeah, merci beaucoup.